Hi, thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, this is going to be an update on uh, observability at GitLab and what we're building into the product and a little bit of what's coming into 15.3. So basically, I've shown a few parts of these demos, but I've always shown them in a way where um, things are developed and run locally. This time, everything is running in our staging environment, a staging environment that will eventually receive uh, tracing data from um, GitLab.com staging. And while we're working on this, I'll be showing a few uh, other ways uh, that you can, how to send your own traces to that platform, for example, and how to send your own errors. I've shown that too. I'll show it quickly again here. After that, I'll show also a little bit of a quick preview on what we're doing with our future UI. So here we're still in this UI that still uses Grafana. Um, the, we are going to look at a few traces that I'm going to send from this computer. So uh, we have this running at this URL, and we also have a GitLab instance that we deployed ourselves at gitlab.staging.obstrace.gcp.com. This to that, I can now send traces through a project. Here, I will use the same demo project I used last time. There's a, um, I need to edit the. So now, uh, basically, what I'm doing is I'm configuring environmental variables for the open telemetry exporter. Uh, I'm going to be sending it to staging.com, and I've set it up for uh, the uh, project, uh, the group number two. And um, I'm using an API key. Uh, that API key I have created by going here. And then there's, in Grafana, a way to create multiple API keys. So once you have access to that UI, you can then create authentication tokens. There's a data source that I had to still configure manually. Uh, this is going to be automatic in 15.3, hopefully. And uh, in this data, uh, but on gitlab.com, it'll be, of course, uh, automatic out of the box. Um, the URL here that you can see is an internal service it's, uh, that we're running to connect to um, the bigger instances that we deploy on GCP. So let's go. Let's start sending certain some data. I'm going to launch this Docker Compose. Uh, and so now this Docker Compose simulates what would be happening in some cluster, right? Like data coming, uh, leaving, tracing data, leaving the application, and then being sent to our open telemetry APIs. For this, we go back to this UI in which you can then start pressing buttons. And by pressing buttons, you generate traces. So let's go to those traces. You can basically see here. I don't think you need to reload the page. I just did give you something to test. Uh, let's see, let's let's just choose anything, right? Like we've done only the same HTTP request. Uh, so, but we can also, so we've done only this one, but we can also inspect it from other aspects. For example, uh, what's generated a SQL query or what's generated a call to Redis. In this case, let's go through, let's enter the trace from where it starts, which is the HTTP requests. So here it is, that's the number of the trace. Um, for those not familiar, a trace basically traces what happens in a program from the moment that a call, a function call starts all the way to when everything finishes. And it goes through the entire infrastructure, if possible, or um, by keeping an ID all along the way. And that way you can see how much time a function spends in calling different parts of your infrastructure and how much time it's spent in some sub functions. So in this case, one HTTP call becomes a call to select a database, a call to find something in the Redis cache, some of them failing for some reason. Uh, you can then dig into what happened and what exactly and which, which part failed. And, um, and then of course, uh, other calls to other parts of the HTTP stack. And from the beginning to the end, you see that this call, for example, took 761 milliseconds, the, the, these, this entire HTTP request. But if you look at, for example, just the SQL query, that took 300 milliseconds. So that's how you use traces, um, just at a high level. While we're here, I might as well explain for those who don't have the context. Right, so that's what you can do right now with this. That's what you will be able to do in 15. 
point three uh, on uh, and uh, yeah. Um, now let's move on to errors real quick. Errors are collecting errors that are happening instead of going to look at them in a log. So that one is also quite easy to simulate. We basically take, sorry, we just, we take a setting, which is here uh, in error, no, settings. And oh, there it is, sorry, uh, monitor. And here we basically already enabled it for this project. We get this to put in uh, the Sentry SDK that we use to send errors. And then in this Go code that we use in the example, I just pasted it here in the init function uh, when you basically init the Sentry client. So it's Sentry compatible um, uh, and uh, all integrated within GitLab. And then you just run the program a couple of times. So that's one here once and two every time there's an error which is on purpose then we just go back to our into the GitLab UI and to error tracking and I've shown this before but basically you can see that it happens uh, how it happened five times it's always the same one and uh, I keep clicking it so you can resolve it once you're done if it doesn't happen again and then if you if it happens again it should to theoretically unresolve it. Let's run it twice more and refresh and it gets unresolved and it has to run seven times, two more. So yeah, and then you can inspect exactly within the code where the error happened. All right, that's it. And then the last piece, our observability UI. So we're currently working our Grafana fork to transform it into uh, our fork in our base. We're removing all the functionality we don't want. We are um, rebranding it with our um, uh, branding, and uh, we are also remove. Uh, we're also going to make a couple of things more prominent eventually in these. Uh, in, in this front page, we removed a bunch of call to actions and we'll replace it with default dashboards over time. But uh, that will not, that's not what we're doing for 15.3. For 15.3, we'll just do the branding and we'll take this. Uh, you'll be able to have it, uh, to view it in an iframe within uh, the GitLab UI so that it looks more or less integrated. And then uh, what you'll be able to do is um, see your traces and also connect to existing Prometheus uh, that somebody might be running or existing Elasticsearch instances that might already be running somewhere. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, feel free to come to the GeoObservability channel or uh, also uh, simply create issues, ask questions. Uh, uh, we're always available and happy to help. Thank you very much.